Hi guys, uh, welcome to the channel and in today's video I wanted to talk about conspiracy theories. Now I love my conspiracy theories as much as the next person and I believe the thing that I like the most about conspiracy theories is that they question any information or news that is shared in front of them. Growing up I was always told to have a questioning attitude because it enables you to expand your knowledge more through your own research, through your own questions and it also sometimes helps you get better solutions to any problem that is presented in front of you. And also with my personal experience in the military, I have come across scenarios where an information that is being shared or being provided is usually broken down into many classifications, uh, depending on where you are, but it's usually secret, top secret, need to know, and things like that. But it's common sense that usually the government or the people in charge, the authoritative figures, get the most unfiltered version of any piece of information. And as it goes down the chain of command or it goes down the ladder, that piece of information gets filtered and the common folks or the common population get the most filtered version, the most redacted version of any piece of information and news, including COVID-19. But that's the good part about conspiracy theories or having a questioning attitude. But one reservation that I have about conspiracy theories or conspiracy theorists is the fact that not only do they not have a questioning attitude, but they also have a personal opinion towards people or authoritative figures and being told stuff. So usually whenever a fact is presented in front of them, they not only question it, but come up with alternative theories and alternative truths about why a certain thing is happening or might have happened. They usually take certain pieces of elements that are obviously true and weave a story around it. And to be honest, it is really hard to not convince yourself or not believe in a conspiracy theory because it is so close to convincing me because when I look into a conspiracy theory it's like looking at YouTube you start with one video and you go down that rabbit hole and you might be researching on something and next thing you know you're watching TikToks or you're watching a mukbang video but this conspiracy theory is the same they start presenting you with facts in the beginning but and they start weaving this little story behind it but the beginning and the end is like so convincing that you sometimes start believing that conspiracies might be true there isn't a government in this world there isn't an official or any authoritative figure that is completely transparent about their business practices or about a news there is usually some sort of again filtering that takes place where an information is withheld and nothing is shared completely. So with that being said, I actually wanted to see what conspiracy theories are surfacing or circling around regarding COVID-19. Whenever there is a huge event, whenever there is a huge news, people and conspiracy theorists start putting on the tinfoil hats and start looking at all that information that is given to them. And I wanted to just Google around and see what common, uncommon, funny, weird, anything, any conspiracy theories are there with COVID-19. So let's get started. So one of the first conspiracy theories that came out whenever COVID-19 started spreading all over the world, ending up into the pandemic that it is today, was how this originated. There were stories that it came from a bat that was bitten by a snake, and then that bat was sold at the wet market in Wuhan which resulted in the virus because the bat had the virus and basically it spread from there. There's also rumors and articles that it was probably due to poor practice and handling of the various animals that were there in that market and it being as termed as the wet market. There was probably cross-contamination which led to the disease you know, spreading. But one interesting conspiracy theory is that this is a bioengineered weapon. There is a biosafety level four super lab located a couple of miles away from the Wuhan market. And there are rumors that this is a way in which China is trying to control its population. Because if you look at the people who are at most risk from COVID-19 are people who have some sort of low immunity or people of a certain age, mostly elderly people. So in a way, if you think about it, if it's a bioengineered weapon, it is targeting people who are sick or not fit or the elderly, not the young, healthy people. But to give you an idea what a biosecurity level four lab is, I'm gonna show you a clip from the movie Pandemic. 
Uh, in the opening scene, they explain it really well as to the levels that are there with biosecurity or bio labs and what kind of PPE or protective equipment one needs to wear into those labs and what kind of viruses to handle. So I'm going to show you the clip right now. Another common conspiracy theory is a book by Dean Kuntz, Kuntz called The Eye of Darkness, where the book revolves around a virus that was originated in Wuhan, China, and the virus was called the Wuhan 400. Now, let me tell you, that is the only similarity that exists between the book's virus versus COVID-19 because every other detail about the virus in the book to how COVID-19 is is completely different. COVID-19 right now has a mortality rate of under 2%, whereas the one in the book was at 100%. Now, some of the funny ones or the not so serious conspiracy theories I actually have written down were something like the Simpsons predicted it about a virus that is going to affect the entire world years ago. There's also one, and I found this really stupid, was there is a bleach, a miracle bleach that has been touted and tweeted and it's gone on like many social platforms that if you consume this bleach more specifically the mineral the miracle mineral solution bleach bleach consuming it kills the virus but please do not be stupid and consume any bleach because it will not help you in any way and it is going to have a really adverse or sometimes even fatal reaction on you so please do not and the last funny conspiracy theory was that if you cannot hold your breath for 10 seconds that you most likely have the coronavirus in you again not true if you believe that you have it if you are showing some sort of symptoms please contact your nearest doctor or find out where testing is available give them a call nowadays i've heard reports there are even drive-by that you don't have to visit a doctor you go to one of these sites you sit in your car they do a swab and you get the results and saving the best for last one of the biggest conspiracy theories that i have seen regarding coronavirus was the 5G conspiracy theory. Now let me explain to you what the 5G conspiracy theory is. China on November 1st, 2019 launched 5G and the theory goes that because of the wavelengths that are used in 5G, the wavelengths are so strong that they usually don't travel long distances, which means that antennas need to be closer in proximity to one another for the signals to go through, which in turn is causing radiation. 
And what we are seeing as symptoms of COVID-19 is nothing but the side effects of this said radiation. To make matters worse and to add more fuel to the fire of this theory, an American singer by the name Carrie Hilson tweeted to her 4.2 million followers that what is happening with COVID-19 is nothing but a 5G effect and the radiation effects that has been taking place. Now this has been profoundly debunked by many scientists, by many educated professionals, that the connection between 5G and COVID-19 is nothing but a mere fact of coincidence and timeline. But again, conspiracy theorists do not believe any information put forth in front of them. They will always have a questioning attitude and like I said in the beginning, they will ignore everything that is put in front of them and make up their own truth and convince others to believe in that truth. And I gotta tell you, sometimes it is really convincing. And the last thing I wanted to talk about is the effects of COVID-19. I recently had an experience, a personal experience in my life and that has made me realize something that I wanted to share with you all. We're all humans, we all have our pride, we all have our egos, and sometimes we let petty fights or misunderstandings get in between relationships, and sometimes we cut off ties to this relationship or we cease to have communication with those people. Don't do that. I sincerely implore to you and ask you that if you have any people who have once meant a lot to you, and you've let these set misunderstandings and fights get in your relationship and you've ceased to talk to that person, reach out to them. It doesn't matter if you are directly affected or indirectly affected. COVID-19 is something that is taking a toll on everybody, emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually. Send a text to that person, send an email, social media is everywhere, DM them, get them on Facebook Messenger, whatever tool that you need to, just reach out to them, let them know that you're there for them because you never know when someone might be feeling lonely, when someone might be needing someone to talk to, to share their, their problems with. So I have been the culprit in this case. I have put some family members aside that I shouldn't have, trying to get back in touch with them, trying to be there for them in their time of need. So if you, again, have any friends, have any family, start communicating. We're all just isolated at home. We're all staying at home. That's the best thing to do right now with uh, COVID-19 is stay at home. So use this time, use this time. Again, like I said in my previous video, learn a new language, learn a new skill. But most importantly, try to communicate, try to reach out to lost relationships, to lost friendships. And with that being said, thank you for watching today's video, guys. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you guys soon.